To you be all glory now and forevermore. Amen. Go ahead and take a seat. Indeed, all hail King Jesus. I don't know, that gets your blood pumping this morning, doesn't it? Yes. Unbelievable. Well, we are glad we are together this morning. Go ahead and fill out that connection card on the app or online and uh, share that you are with us this morning. Also share prayer requests. Those are wonderful things to uh, pray through. We love to do that as well. And I want to give a little public service announcement this morning. We do have a congregational meeting next Sunday at 1015 in North Loft. We're going to be voting on a couple of elders, members vote, but if you're not a member, come on anyway and just uh, get a little peek on what the process is about elders and how we do government around here. It'd be a wonderful opportunity for you to do that. Well, as you know that each year, Constance takes a month and just focuses on missions. We love to bring awareness to our partners and some of the special projects they have, but also we want to make sure that you have an opportunity just to have your minds convicted and your hearts just broken for the needs of the least of these around the world, here in the States, and locally. Why? Because we believe that that is a great catalyst in anybody's spiritual journey, and that'll bring you from one point to another point in your spiritual journey, hopefully. It's kind of a, you know, jump start kind of thing. Maybe some of your cars needed that this morning. But anyway, um, last year, we had the opportunity to uh, fund a couple of projects, and I just want to highlight a couple of them this morning. One of them is wheelchairs in Congo. Now, Congo isn't known to have really smooth roads or smooth anything, um, so they had to redesign wheelchairs to get around. So they designed these in our school, and what they did was they took that design, and now some of the uh, Follow Me centers that we supported are creating these wheelchairs to give mobility to people that normally would not have mobility. So that's a really huge impact on their lives as well. The other thing we did, just as an aside, we, we purchased a motorcycle for the director who was trying to get around to all of these sites in a little bicycle and uh, using public transportation, and he's much more efficient now in this beaming new motorcycle. I'm a little jealous about this motorcycle. <laughs> but the other thing is, we, uh, at the end of the school year, we uh, purchased tools for all the students at the Aliki Center who graduated. Now, some of these people, they, they uh, study agriculture, they study carpentry, and they study uh, sewing. And what this does for them is it gives them the opportunity to go back to their villages and start small businesses to uh, contribute to not only their well-being, but their families and their villages' well-being as well. It's a, just a huge impact that these uh, students have on their spheres of influence when they go with these brand new tools that they can start these businesses with. So it's really fun to see them do that. The other thing, last week, we looked at Haiti a little bit, and we learned from Jen about the impact of global fingerprints and the sponsorship program that we have with children. Now, there are other opportunities, some more opportunities to sponsor children out in the uh, fireplace area. Please go out there and just talk to someone about sponsoring a child because that makes a huge impact, not only on the child's life, but the family's life. And you know what Global Fingerprints is doing with all of those families? They're planting churches in all of those sites. So we are actually helping planting churches all over the world. That's a wonderful thing as well. And we heard that we were participating in funding some uh, creation of some homes in Haiti. And I erroneously said that we were making four of them for $5,000. That's not true. We're making four of them at $5,000 each. So we need $5,000 per house. So we need to fund that a little bit uh, more than what I had anticipated. Anyway, that's uh, from Haiti. This week, <clears throat> what we want to do is I want to introduce you to two people from our congregation who were unsuspectingly sitting right where you are a few years ago. And God got a hold of them and said, I want you to be involved in missions. I just want you to introduce them to you. This is Mark and Deb Maloney. They are site coordinators for Poland. And I'm going to ask them a couple questions. One is, how did you get involved in missions? Well, Jeff, as you mentioned, we were coming to Constance for a number of years, and uh, we were sitting right over there, and Pastor Jim Scott had announced that uh, 
there was a crisis response team that Constance was sending to Haiti. And Debbie and her daughter Ashley had been on a global fingerprints trip. But uh, up to that point, uh, six months before, but up to that point, I had never had my heart stirred for missions. And something happened in that instant. And by the time we got home from that Sunday service, we had decided we were going back to Haiti. So. <laughs> Great. And since then, what has been the impact or what's been transformative about that decision? Responding in obedience to God's call for missions definitely deepened my faith a great deal. Um, building these relationships with people in different places deepened my prayer life because these are real people that I know. When, it, when you hear about these global incidences, it really stirs your heart a lot when you know specific people in those areas. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you guys are working in Poland, and what is uh, the impact, or what have you seen take place in Poland? What's the ministry like there? Our first trip to Poland was a crisis response trip, uh, understandably because of what was going on in Ukraine. And uh, the little town that's near the Ukrainian border that where this church is um, is called Rubieshu. And in the beginning, it looked like a crisis response reaction. Uh, helping the church with whatever it was they needed because they were diverting their energy and resources into uh, Ukrainian refugee relief. And uh, as it has uh, unfolded for the last year and a half, we've really become partners in what their ministry is to their community. They have all sorts of uh, creative and innovative ideas for outreach in their community. So we have seen that in our time there in the trips that we've been there. We've seen this this, we've built a relationship with this small church, and we've also seen them doing the things that uh, that uh, you you would want to see a church doing in terms of VBS and um, youth ministry. And now they're even looking at uh, a church plant mm -hmm. in a nearby community. So they're multiplying their efforts just through some of our initiatives. That's a wonderful thing. Um, well, I just want to uh, pray for you guys and uh, pray for our next uh, step here. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for uh, Mark and Deb, that they uh, stepped out, that they are just models of what you can do uh, with folks and just how you transform their lives into uh, different perspectives and different uh, ways of looking at things, but also just realizing that you can do great things through each one of us. And we just uh, pray for Poland. Uh, we pray for that little church as they uh, go about their business about um, bringing the gospel to new places and new uh, neighborhoods that they've never even thought about uh, visiting. And now they've got a vision uh, for bringing you there and the new church that they're thinking about and uh, all kinds of different things that they are just really excited about uh, doing. And Lord, we just pray for us as we um, go about uh, this month that we are uh, looking at who you are and what your uh, plan for us is in your uh plan for the world, and we just thank you for that, and we just thank you for all these things, and we'd ask that uh, you would be with uh, Randy as he comes and uh, brings us uh, the word, and we just uh, thank you for that.